Welcome to Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2's Midterm 2 Practice Problem Screencasts. We're working on problem 2.1 at this point, but as we mentioned in the overview, it's really important to know what the master theorem looks like. So I'm just going to copy in here the key things that we talked about. First, we said the recurrence needs to be of this form for us to use the master theorem. So T of n is equal to this. Now we talked about a few other things. We need constant time base cases, but we actually have that right here. There are certain restrictions on A. A must be greater than or equal to 1. B must be greater than 1. There are some restrictions on F in one of the cases, and let's get to that when we see it actually applies. Uh, but these are the core restrictions that we have. We satisfy the base case restriction in all of these problems because it says it in the intro. But otherwise, we need something of this form. Now, when are we in the leaf case? So the leaf case was when f of n is in big O of n to the c for c less than n to the log base b of a. And we worked through why that was last time. For the balanced case, we had f of n is in theta of n to the c times some extra log factor. And I won't rewrite c here. Well, I guess I will. It's different on each problem, but it's of the same form on each problem. It's just this comparison operator that changes on each problem. Okay. Oops. Sorry about that, just trying to erase this line and got more than I bargained for. Okay, and in the root case, we have f of n is lower bounded by n to the c for c greater than n to the log base b of a. Okay, so does the master theorem apply here? Well, let's take a look. Is it of this form? Is it a times t of n over b for a greater than or equal to 1 and b greater than 1? Well, we've clearly got an a here. Uh, we've clearly got an f of n. This is f of n over here. But what's going on in here? This does not look like n over b. And even if we were able to ignore the minus 1, what we have for n here, if we just change this to t of n, which it's not clear that we can do anyway, then we would have b equal to 1 and b is restricted to be greater than 1 for a very good reason. Otherwise we're not breaking down the problem size at each step and maybe we've got infinite recursion. So the master theorem just does not apply here. Now that's not to say that you should necessarily stop at this point. It would be great to solve this recurrence and to figure out how long it actually does take to run and you can do that just by drawing a recursion tree. So for example, the number of levels in this tree, well, n is going down by 1 in each case, and our base case is either when n is equal to 1 or when n is equal to 0. We'll just pick to make it convenient. So the tree is going to have n levels. And that's a big step on the way to figuring out what the sum of the work per level is in that tree. But I'll let you work on that on your own. As far as this problem is concerned, we are done. The master theorem does not apply.